we don't tell you enough, Lord, that we love you. Yes, we don't tell you enough that we adore you. Yes, we don't tell you enough that you're wonderful and kind. We don't give you enough aberration. But we just want to take this time this morning and say, thank you. Now, Lord, let this word break forth into your people today. And let it not come back for it. And in everything I say and everything I do, I, I make sure you get all the glory, you get all the praise. I take none of your credit, but I magnify your name. So anoint me with the anointing that makes preaching easy. Uh, help me to unpack the steps and make the book talk today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we will give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you give God another praise right there? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you can be seated. In the presence of the Lord, I, I just want to, can we talk this morning? We're going to make the book talk, but can we talk this morning? Uh, we'll continue with our series called Love Gone Wild. And I think it's appropriate with Valentine's being this Wednesday that I deal with the subject this morning, loving that special one. Right. Loving that special one, i.e. your spouse, i.e. your fiance, the significant one, that significant one rather, and even that boo that you've been with a long time that you should be married to by now, <laughs> but you're not, yeah, 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 even that one, loving that special one. My singles eavesdrop on me this morning, would you? Singles eavesdrop on me this morning because I'm going to drop some truth that if they ain't loving you this way, you need to kick them to the curb. Oh, yeah, I said it. Yeah, eavesdrop on me this morning because in, in 1989, I mean 1989, yeah, 1989, Jody Watley had the, one of the biggest hits of the year, and she said, real love. I know I want to have one. Real love. Got to try and get some. Real love. Everybody need one. Real love. Got to have real love. Yeah, Jody said she needs real love. But then when I drop down to, when I look at the scripture, 1 John 3 and 16, 1 John 3 and 16, for the New Living Translation, you may not have it if you just got a Bible, but you got your cell phone, your tablet, you can hit me up real quick. 1 John 3 and 16, it tells me this. We know what real love is. Hold up, wait a minute. What you say? We know what real love is because Jesus gave his life for us. So we, so we also ought to give our lives for our brothers and Sisters, real love, Jesus gave his life. So if Jesus gave up his life for us, what does that mean? If that's real love, what does that mean? So this morning, let's find out what that means. Dr. Gary Chapman in his book, Love Language, a devotion for couples. He made a statement. He said when he first got married, he thought everybody were mourning people. And then he got married and found out his wife wasn't. And then he soon began to dislike her and she soon began to dislike him. And for several years, their marriage was just on the rocks. Until the revelation of the scripture hit his house. And he looked at the scripture and realized that General, real love displays sacrifice. So if I'm supposed to lay down my life for my brother and sister, and that's real love, I should start with my spouse. Or this morning, that special one, i.e., 
whoever that may be in your life. I should start with them. So my first point is that real love is sacrificial. Yeah, it's sacrificial. It means you must be willing to lay down your own desires and expectations to serve that special one. I know it's early in the message and I hit you real hard, so I'm going to say it again. You must be willing to lay down your own desires and expectations for that special one. That's real love. When Jesus died, he laid down his own desires and expectations. And why did he do it? He did it for us. So he said real love is when you lay down what you want. Oh, yeah. I'm glad Valentine's Day is Wednesday. I'm, brothers, I'm spoiling some of y'all time. I'm sorry. He said lay down what you want and pick up what they want. Pastor, I don't, I know y'all, y'all saying you're here right now, Pastor, I don't understand that because if I lay down what I want and pick up what they want, when am I going to get what I want? <laughs> See, y'all playing me this morning because you know you want to say it and I just said it for you, so you should say amen right there. When, when am I going to get what I want? But what I've learned is that God said I can't give nothing and don't receive it back. Give and it shall be given, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give until your bosom. Maybe you ain't getting nothing because you ain't giving nothing. Oh, Jesus. So, so real love is sacrificial. It is a sacrifice for me to lay down my own desires and my own expectations and do what first lady want me to do. <laughs> yeah, I get that laugh all the time, I tell you. <laughs> it is a sacrifice for me. But I learned there's some benefits with sacrifice. I ain't going to mess with nobody this morning. You got to understand that you can't sacrifice something and God don't reward you. And for my singles, anybody who's not willing to sacrifice something ain't willing enough and ain't good enough for you. Uh, I know why you're not saying amen because the one you with right now ain't sacrificing nothing for you right now. And you're scared I'm going to tell you to kick them to the curb. Well, you might as well already get in your mind. I already said kick them now, right now. Kick them right now because we always want to say, I can work with them. You might as well get what you want and start playing with what you don't. Oh, Jesus. I said something right there. I, I said it right there. Get what you want and stop playing with what you don't want. You don't want that. And then you, you, you lusting over here for what you want, but you got this. If I ain't what you want, leave me alone. Let me get, get what you want so I won't play with you. Oh, God, real love is sacrificial. It, it, it doesn't look for its own. It's always trying to please the other. Isn't that what God does for us? Isn't that what God does for us? Because a whole lot of times we don't do what he won't. A whole lot of times we don't get in the morning, wake up in the morning and say good morning, and he woke you up to say good morning. You think you woke up to run to the bathroom and you can't go back to sleep. Maybe God want to talk to you. Maybe God want to spend some time with you. Real love is sacrificial. It's not looking to please itself. It's looking to please somebody else. And if they're not willing to please you, oh, God. Some of y'all, some of y'all stuck, so I can't help y'all. <sighs> this is a hard house that they've been. Some of y'all stuck, and I can't help you. I just got to pray that God will change your situation, that they'll find out what real love is. But singles, please eavesdrop on me, because if he's not willing or she's not willing to sacrifice, then they're not good enough for you. Why are we always lowering our standards for somebody just to be our boo? <laughs> I got one good God. Say it again, child. Say it again. <sighs> why, why? Why? Well, Pastor, I got some I got somebody right now and we're together and we're married and I ain't getting that. Maybe you need to have a conversation with them. Maybe you need to have a conversation with them and look them in the eye and do, do, say, do you really love me? 
You know I love you. If you love me, why you ain't doing nothing for me? If you love me, why is it always your way and never my way? If you love me, why can't you give up the football game for me when it ain't the Super Bowl? I ain't going to help you every day. Why, why, why? If you really love me, can you, can you not do this in one time? Spend time with me if you really love me. Can we have some time together if you really love me? You say you do. Because real love is sacrificial. Real love is sacrificial. Can I get point number two? If you have real love, then you treat that special one just like you treat yourself or how you want to be treated. Real love. If I love you, I treat you like I treat myself. So when I go out and get me something, I get you something too. Oh God. If I'm not hitting on me while I'm hitting on you. If I'm not cussing myself out while I'm cussing you out. Real love treats you just like you treat yourself and how you want to be treated. Can I, can I give it to you in the text? Ephesians 5 and 22. I'm sorry, Ephesians 5 and 27 in the Message Bible, because I had to get it plain for you. Ephesians 5 and 27 in the Message Bible, look what it says. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wife, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by, listen to this, a love marked by giving, not getting. Mm, 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 mm. Is your love affair one-sided? Is it one-sided? You didn't have a conference with that bull you with. Is it one-sided? Y'all need to talk. Because real love is, is marked by giving and not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words, listen to this, Christ's words invokes her beauty. Everything he does says she is designed to bring forth the best out of her, is designed to bring forth the best out of her. Dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. The message Bible says his words brings out the best in the church. Your word should bring out the best in the one that you're supposed to be loving. What's the last time you, what's the last thing you said to your special wife? Was it kind? <laughs> it must not have been all that because they can't say nothing. What, what, what's the last thing you said? Because real love dresses you up even when you look ugly. Real love makes you beautiful when nobody else can see it but you. Real love says, I, I, I see something in you that I want to bring out of you. Real love. Real love. Because real love treats you just like it treats itself. If they love you, they should be treating you like they're treating themselves. I did with self the last Sunday in this month, but real love does that. And it brings out the best. I want to keep reading from the, from the message Bible because it says, and this is how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. No one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. Pampers. Go, can I give you the eating definition? Goes out of this way to do something for you. That's pamper. Go out of his way. To do something for you. That's love. Even when you don't feel like doing it. My wife woke up and she said, baby, you got to go to the store. And I was downstairs and I, was, I shouted back, why? <laughs> she said, I need you to get something from the store. I said, what? I ain't going to tell you what. 
And she's like, go get it. And I was like, and I was mad. And she said, go on the computer and get a coupon. And I was real mad then. I sure did. Because real love don't look at what you're doing for yourself. Real love said, what can I do for somebody else? So I went on it, printed up, got it, went out, and came back. In time to take Olivia, I mean Trinity, to the bus stop. I had to put the S on my chest. Oh, God. <laughs> I had to put the S on my chest. Because real love, even when you don't feel like, catch this, catch this, catch this. Real love, even when you don't feel like doing it, you get up and you do it because it's real love. Stop tripping because you ain't going to always feel like doing it. Just because you don't feel like doing it don't mean you're not in love. That's the evidence of your love. When you don't feel like doing it, but you do it anyway. When you're tired, it don't feel like. You ever have, see, maybe this don't happen in your house. You ever been upstairs and your spouse said, can you go downstairs and get something for him? <laughs> and you ain't been there. You ain't been there. Oh, you don't got no two-story house. You got a one-story. You in your bedroom. Can you go in the kitchen and get some? <sighs> Real love says, yes, baby. See, y'all think real love means I feel like doing it. No, real love don't mean you feel like doing it. Real love says, despite how I feel, I still do it. That's real love. So I get out the bed, go downstairs, and fix it the way they like it. And bring it back upstairs. Because real love treats the special one just like you treat yourself. And if you wanted something, you would get up, go, and get it. And fix it just like you want it. Real love does that for somebody else. See, I understand, I understand, I understand why many people don't know what real love is because they haven't seen it. They've seen the love that's only been displayed when it benefits somebody else. But I'm here to tell you that's not love. I'm tired of people giving definition to love that ain't no definition for love. I love you. That's why I hit you. That ain't love. Don't love me so much then. I, I, I love you. That's why I treat you that way. Then you need to stop loving me because you ain't treating me right. And I'm tired of us giving definition to love that ain't love. Now your children looking at stuff that ain't love. And you mad because they got a boo that you ain't crazy about, that they crazy about, who is crazy? Oh, God. Because you won't give them the real definition of what love is. Be straight with them. Let them know I'm in this, but this ain't real love. Because some of y'all are in some stuff. Oh, I ain't going to mess with y'all this morning. It ain't got there yet. It ain't got there yet. It ain't got there yet. It's trying to get there, but it ain't got there yet. But don't set your kids up for failure and not showing them what real love is. This ain't how you're supposed to do it. I put the ass on my chest and what my wife is able to say to my daughters, y'all want to marry somebody like your daddy. And I'm not just saying that to be preaching. She says that. Y'all need to marry somebody like your daddy. And my other daughters, when they... I'm married, compare everybody to me. I can't say up it that I did the good. You just got a standard you got to live up to. And I'm not going to bring the standard down just because you don't want to live up to it. Oh, Jesus. Pastor, you wouldn't say that. Yeah, one of my son-in-laws is here. I say it. Amen. And if the other one's here, he'll tell you he says it all the time. Because real love treats the special one like you treat yourself. Can I hit my point number three? Point number three has a part A and a part B. I did that especially for Susan Nisi. Point number three has a part A and a part B. Part A. 3A says real love is not double-minded. Real love is not double-minded. Real love does not say one thing with its mouth one minute and your actions say you don't love me the next minute. Real love ain't double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Real love is not unstable. That stuff you got ain't love. 
Why y'all get quiet? It ain't love. It can get there, but it ain't there yet. So don't call it what it ain't. Pastor, I'm calling this thing. Say, oh, now nah, it's be that. That's their word. You need to call it. He's going to be loving me, but he ain't loving me right now. Oh, God, you ain't helping me right now. And you need to tell them you ain't loving me right now. You double-minded. You tell me you love me with, my, with your mouth, but the next minute you're doing stuff to show that you don't love me. Maybe they don't know. Oh, you didn't know you would come to Site 101 today, did you? Maybe they don't know. Real love is word and action. Real love is communication and deeds. Real love has two wings. Has two wings, communication and action. It can't fly with one wing. You can't talk real love. God so loved the world that he gave. He didn't talk it. He gave it. His only begotten son, he gave it. He said he was going to do it in the Old Testament, and he did it in the New Testament. Real love is Jesus said, I'm not coming down off this cross, because if I come down off this cross, LLWC would never be formed. If I come down off this cross, some of you would never be blessed. If I come down off the cross, so real love said, I'm not going to say I love you. I'm going to hang here until the ninth hour, and then I'm going to say it's finished, and it to do your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Real love hangs there. Real love hangs out with you, even when it don't feel like hanging out with you. Real love hangs even when it's in pain. Real love ain't double-minded. Real love has two rings. Can I hit point B, part B or point three? Real love is not bipolar. I went and looked up the definition of bipolar, y'all. Real love ain't bipolar. The simplest definition of bipolar is a roller coaster. That's the simplest definition. It's a roller coaster. One day you're up, one day you're down. One day you're up, one, one day you feel like a nut, one day... Oh. And real love ain't bipolar. You can't love me today and don't love me tomorrow. Real love ain't bipolar. It's not bipolar. You may be bipolar, but love ain't bipolar. Oh, God. And if you let real love work in you, you'll stop being so bipolar. Oh, God. I can't get no help in here today. But somebody should be saying, I'm tired of this roller coaster. It's good when we're going down, but it's bad when we got to creep back up. Love doesn't take you on a roller coaster with each other. Although life may take you on a roller coaster and you're in it together. Catch it. I'd rather be in love with First Lady and life take us on a roller coaster than her taking me on a roller coaster. It's two different things. But if we in the, get this thing together and we're on a roller coaster, we're going to yell together. And hold hands together in this life of roller coasters. But the one I love shouldn't be taking me on a roller coaster because love is not bipolar. And we're giving, and the reason why I get kind of upset when people be saying this is love, because the Bible declares God is love, and God wouldn't treat you like that. God wouldn't treat you like that. So real love ain't double-minded. Real love ain't bipolar. I'm going to hit my fourth point. Real love is not a merit system. What do you mean, Pastor, a merit system? A merit system is something that you get promoted because of something you do. Your abilities, your talent. Real love is not a merit system. I don't love you. You don't get my love because you earned it. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, I'm going to be transparent. If first lady had to love me because I earned it, her love would probably be at 50%. Because <laughs> I ain't all that good sometimes. I 
can't earn. Real love is not something I earn. Real love is just giving. It's not an earning system. It's not based on my achievements. God didn't love me because I earned it. And I don't need nobody loving me because I earn it. What if I don't earn it? You going to stop loving me? What if I don't know how to earn it? Are you going to stop loving me? What if I'm doing my best but I'm still failing? Are you going to stop loving me? It's not something that's supposed to be earned. That means I'm supposed to be performing every week to earn your love. What if my performance is not good this week? That means you're going to stop loving me? Real love is not something that you earn. Real love is just something that is given. It's given. Not because you did this or you did that. It's given just because I love you. Can you stop telling people you love them and you don't? Can you stop telling people you love them and everybody say, I love you, I love you. You love what? You don't know me. But we're watering down love. Why? So you can do anything you want and call it love? So I can treat you any way I want and call it love? So I can act crazy and call it love? You want to leave me and go to somebody else? Because I really love them. Well, I thought you really loved me. Which one is it? Or which one was it? Or do you know? Just be real. Because I, if I got to earn this, then I don't want it. See, you're scared to tell somebody that. If I got to earn this, then I don't want it. Because I may fall short. And I'm just this kind of person. I need it all the time. So since I can't earn it, I don't want it. Let me go somewhere else. Will somebody give it to me where I don't have to earn it? Because I can't figure out what day you want to love me and what day you don't. I'm not psychic. I don't know what cycle you're on right now. Today you feel like loving me. Today you don't feel like loving me. Today you're going to be kind to me. Today you're not going to be kind to me. Love is not like that. God is not like that. His mercy is new every morning. His mercy is new every morning. But Pastor, I, 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 you done hit me so hard with this thing. I don't think I got this. Well, you know, there is something called the impossible list. Oh, God. And, and, and it tells me that prayer changes things and changes people. But I've learned something. If I would adjust myself, God would adjust everything else. Oh, God, you ain't heard me there. So you want him to adjust somebody else. But why don't you be like Paul in whatever state I'm in? I've learned to be content. You don't want to love me. Don't worry. I got somebody who's going to love me. God said he'll wrap my arms around me until you get some sense. Or if you don't get some, he'll send somebody who does have some. He's going to wrap his all around me, take care of me until he brings resolution to what's happening with me. Because once you get content, the devil can't mess with you. Once you get content, he can't bother you. Once you get content, how do I get content, Pastor? You put it in God's hand. I want to ask you something. You've been working with it for all this time. How's that working out for you? You've been trying to fix it all this time. How's that working out for you? You got the degree and the master's. How's that working out for you? Well, since it ain't working, why don't you give it to God? And if you give it to God, that means you got to do what he told you to do. And sometimes he tells you to love despite of. Because I learned something about love. Love going to make you act right or going to drive you out one or the other. Y'all don't want to help me in here. Love is going to make you outright. I'm going to love the hell out of you. It's either going to make you want to love me or going to make you want to hate me. But one thing going to happen. There's going to be a change in this house. But I'm going to love till a change happens in this place. 
Because love either is going to make you love me or get on your nerves. Why they keep doing something for me? Why they keep so kind to me? I did all this. Why, 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 why? And it's going to make you change. What's going to make you leave? That's the reality of it. That's the reality of it. But God got a way of moving situations. You want to know why the movie Fireproof was so strong when it came out? Because it demonstrated what love can do even when it's not being loved back. You want to know why um, prayer room was so powerful? Because it demonstrated when I make my mind up and I be content where I'm at, no matter what hell comes against me, God will turn this thing around. And that's full, that was a movie, but that's the proof. She loved him until he couldn't take it no more. He loved him until he said, I can't do this no more. I got to change my ways. I got to turn this thing around. Why? He's looking at the food trying to find out if there's something in it because she know he didn't deserve the love, but the love was still coming. Would you still give love in spite of you not getting lit because love treats the other one like you want to be treated guess what even when you're not being treated right that's for my married couples that's for my married couples point five and i'm closing this is for my singles be single and satisfied be single and satisfied Pastor, I don't got a boo. You don't need a boo. God said he'll be your valentine. God said he'll wrap your arms around you. He'll keep you. Stay who you are until God sent you who you need. Don't jump into something too. I need this. No, don't jump into anything too quick. Let God be who he needs to be in your life until he sends you the right thing. And don't move too quick because some stuff ain't what it looks like. Don't be so desperate that you settle for anything. If you can't meet my standards, then you don't need me. And somebody, they, the devil whispered in your ear, you'll always be by yourself. Well, if I'm always by myself, that means God's going to be with me and I'll be okay. Because I would be by myself happy than be with somebody and unhappy. You better, <laughs> you better. <laughs> See, this is the thing we have in church. You got all of it. You got the, you got the ones that are not married that want to be married. And you got the ones that are married that try to figure out how they can get out of it. Oh, God. <laughs> But when I learn to be content where I am, I'm single, but I'm satisfied. I'm single, but I'm complete. I'm single, but I'm whole. Because if I'm still broke, I'm going to break what God sends to me. And can I tell you something? Nothing will come to you that's from God until you are healed. Because hurting people hurt people. And maybe if you let God heal you, it'll come a lot sooner. But be, be single and satisfied. And this is what most singles don't do, and I'm closing. They don't enjoy their singleness. Yeah, they don't enjoy their singleness. You don't got to answer to nobody. You don't got to be there with nobody. You don't got to buy no Valentine card if you don't want to. You don't got to buy no can. You don't got to call nobody if you don't want to. You got to enjoy your singleness until God gets you in another state. You so busy rushing through your singleness that you don't enjoy it. And then you get with somebody and say, did I miss all that? Enjoy where you are. Enjoy where you are. David Meyer said something. George Meyer's husband, he said, and I, I caught this thing and I, I slowed down. He said, stop wishing your children uh, would be older. Enjoy where they are. And I had to stop and think, wow, let me enjoy where they are. They're getting on my nerves where they are, but let me enjoy where they are. Because when they get older, I'm going to wish they were where they are. So let me enjoy where they are. So can, I, can I give you this advice? Singles, enjoy where you are. Enjoy where you are. where you are and let God bring peace where you are and God is this kind of person stop letting the devil tell you one there's nobody out there for you one you'll never be this again I got many singles who were married and singles now that are not married now they're single again and then I got some who never been married 
And all that plays a part in it. But God said, I'll cover it all. I'll cover it all. And, and this is a unique thing. Unique thing. I, didn't, I just recognize this is a unique thing while you're here. I've been in every stage. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I've been in every stage. So I know where you're at. And God will, once you get hold, satisfied, he'll do it. I'm closing. I'm closing. My wife is looking at me funny. I'm closing. I'm closing on this point. When I was going through, I made this decision in my mind to all my singles. I made this decision in my mind. I said, Lord, I'm just going to concentrate on you. I'm just going to love you. I'm tired of this love game. I don't feel like dealing with it. I got content where I was. As soon as I got content where I was, here come a hit and run. <laughs> blindsided me. I didn't even see her coming. She blindsided me because I won't looking. And she blindsided me. I said, whoa. Lord, wait a minute. I ain't trying to go there right now. God said, you better go, boy. <laughs> Be content where you are. And God will blindside you. I had already made my mind, Lord, I'm going to get in ministry. I'm going to work on my ministry. I'm going to work on preaching. I'm going to get all that together. And God said, boy, you can't handle that. Let me send you some. Go. Be content where you are. Let God heal you where you are. Enjoy where you are. And watch what God will do for you. Loving that special one. Come on, give God a praise right there.